What's going on guys? Welcome to Steve Does Stuff. I'm Steve and today we're going to be doing some four-wheeler stuff. Not that four-wheeler, this guy. This is a 1999 Honda Foreman 450 ES. This is my brother's four-wheeler and a couple weeks ago it went from a four-wheel drive to a two-wheel drive. So today we're going to be taking off the back axle and seeing if the same thing happened to this thing. For those of you who don't know, I have a 1996 Honda Foreman 400 and last year I was bow hunting in the winter. Drum brake froze up and my back axle splines were basically so worn out that they just gave up. So I think the same thing has happened to this. Let's see how many miles this thing has on it. 13,000 kilometers total. So let's get this thing out of here and see. When this thing broke, he said he went into a mud hole and there was a big bang and then all of a sudden the back wheel stopped turning altogether. So something similar that happened to mine, the transmission still shifts perfectly still drives he drove out of there it's 12 kilometers through mud holes and he still made it out in one wheel drive uh, as this thing kind of clawed itself out but just to show you 13,000 kilometers still shifts and drives perfect there's no clanking there's no crunching so now that we know that this thing shifts and drives properly we're gonna put the front end up on some blocks of wood and see if we can just get the front tire spinning and see what the back does Just like the 4man 400 that I have, this bike has been in our family since 1997 when we bought it brand new. 13,000 kilometers on it so far. The only thing that we've done to it is new tires and rims and a front disc brake conversion, which if any one of you has a 4man out there or a Honda with drum brakes, you know they're kind of more of a suggestion than anything. They don't stop, they fill up with water, they freeze, they're a nightmare. So this one actually has brakes, which is really nice but the axle finally failed. So I wasn't sure how many kilometers are on my 4man 400, but this thing plowed for years at my dad's place before I gave it to my brother. So the rear end's probably got a lot of abuse and it finally gave up. So now that we verified that transmission shifts fine, the front wheels turn with it, the rear's moving, we can kind of feel something turning in the rear diff. Now it's time to get this thing up in the air. Super simple, floor jack pile of firewood, get it up in the air and start blasting this thing off. Rear tires are off and the rear is totally off the ground. Sitting here like that. Just out of curiosity, without the motor going, put it in first and I'm still thinking it's the splines on the axle for the ring gear that have gone. So the seals in these drum brakes, they're more theoretical than anything. So these fill up with water, the axle tubes fill up with water, and then the surface between the ring gear and the axle starts to corrode. Obviously it takes all the abuse, and over time the splines just wear, so you need a new axle and a new ring gear. The only way to know is really get this whole thing apart, but the fact that I don't hear any like big crunches, you can easily spin it, makes me think the splines on the axle where the ring gear meet are totally smoked, just like mine. But we'll keep taking this thing apart, see what happens. So now it's time to take the shocks off. First step to starting to drop this axle out. There's a 14 millimeter bolt and nut on the other side. So just throw a ratchet and a wrench on there and it'll come right off. So we got one shock undone. Let's see that guy's ready to go. These are an absolute bugger to take off because more than likely they are gonna be seized. So a little bit of persuasion, the wrong tools, but used for the right way are the only way you're probably gonna get these off. We are just gonna take this drum brake totally apart uh, because it doesn't work. It hasn't worked in like 10 years. And the rear disc brake conversion is a bit more intrusive than the than the front disc brake conversion. So if you have to space them out, you have to get a whole bunch of different rims and not interested in that. So we are most likely just gonna take everything apart, put these cables back on extremely loose, but they are a pain in the nuts. So we are about eight bolts away from getting this whole swing arm off. 
There is four bolts right here with nuts on the back, both 14 millimeter. And then there are four bolts holding the input shaft onto the differential housing, four 14 millimeter bolts, and then this whole thing will come off. Before you do that, make sure you take the drum brake vent tube off and the diff vent tube off. Just kind of grab a pair of pliers to slide them off. These hoses seem to hold up pretty well. So we're gonna do diff vent tubes and then these eight bolts and this whole baby is just gonna come right off. You don't even really need pliers. You can just kind of work them back with your fingernails until they're kind of sliding off that nipple that holds this thing on. When you have this thing off, be super, super, super careful that you don't lay the axle down upside down and crush this down because if you break this, you're in big trouble. So with this one, it's a little bit more involved. You kind of got to snake it through a couple places. So take your little tab off this guy right here and then just slide it back through here because once this come up, comes off, we don't want to rip it. So we're going to pull this guy all the way back. Now, I'm gonna support this axle, do a better job of supporting it with the jack. So when I undo all these bolts, it doesn't come ripping off of here. Well, it's been a while since I've done this, but as you can see, our four bolts on the back, you're definitely gonna have to take the skid plate off, something that I totally forgot about. So you can get at the top two bolts, but you're never gonna be able to get to the bottom two. So you're gonna have to take the skid plate off. Fortunately for us, skid plate is easy to get at. Three 12 millimeter bolts. One on either side of the diff, and one on the very front of it. So we're gonna pull that guy off and keep going. Mmm, lovely. So before I rip this thing off, I just wanna show you that this axle is completely free. All the bolts are undone, but it is still in place. So both of our shocks, you can see, undone. All four of these swing arm bolts that hook the axle on, undone. All four of these bolts on the back here, fully undone. We got our brake cables, undone. We got our vent tubes, undone off the drum brake and then threaded back through to where they'll stay in the spring arm, or swing arm. And we've also got our diff vent fully undone. So I'm basically just going to yank this right backwards. Fair warning, the four-wheeler may fall forward, so I'm gonna move my feet out of my way. Ah, fuck. I took this guy with us. We don't want that. If this comes out, it's not a big deal. It doesn't look like there's any chunkies on there. So I am going to set this somewhere where it does not get dirty. This is the drive shaft that goes right up into here. You gotta thread these teeth in and it sits right there. Looking over this, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it whatsoever. There's no chunks of metal, there's no flex. None of these uh, splines have anything wrong with them. It's just greasy, so what I'm gonna do is insert it back up into here. You gotta kinda keep the swing arm tilted up so it will fit in there. It is, it is it's a bitch to put back in there because it's so long and you gotta keep it centered up in there, but I'm gonna put it back in here and leave it because this is not gonna be part of anything we're doing. If you can see all the way up to the front, you can see right at the front of the tube, the back of the motor, that is where this axle shaft has to kind of sit into. So I'm just gonna press it back in here. This guy has to go back in. So now that the axle is off, I jacked up the front end. I'm gonna put it in gear, let the front tire spin because I wanna see if the drive shaft at the very back of the motor is still spinning. I'm like 100% sure that it still is, but I wanna try it and show you guys. We got our front tire spinning here. You can see way back in there. Got our drive shaft flopped around in there, which is perfect. So that means this is the issue. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pop both of these hubs off, or both of the wheel studs or splines or whatever the heck you wanna call them. We're gonna take this side off, we're gonna take the drum brake assembly apart, and then we're gonna slide the axle tube out. And you're gonna see, even though we're not gonna split this today, you're gonna see that where the axle goes through and attaches to the ring gear, it's gonna be done. So I had to run out to Canadian Tire, but this is a 29 to 30 millimeter stocket for this castle nut here. Got it soaking in PD, and uh, I'm gonna go at it with the impact gun. So now that we got both of these off, I'm gonna take the drum brake out because this thing 
it's going to be sliding out this way. You can slide the whole axle out this way. So basically you got to undo all of these, slide the cap off and uh, take you along for the ride. I got two dogs. Look at all these dogs. Now we got them all off. There are these little areas where you can pry all around the drum to try and get them off. So basically you just got to work it back and forth to get it done. Just like that. Off. It looks like this thing was rubbing. Where on the inside, I, I don't really know. So this is basically just a cover for the drum brake. This is the inside of the drum brake. The drum actually sits on the inside of this. So again, this is a bastard to get off because you got to slide it back on all these splines. Let's try that. Oh wow, that's way easier. Ha! We got uh, one of the shoes. Okay, well, these brakes haven't worked in about 10 years, and what will happen, as you can see, the insides of these basically just fill up with water and mud. Like, we would ride through a lot of beaver swamps when we go hunting, so these fill up with mud and crap, and then they freeze solid. So, you know, when it gets cold, you really can't move because your back drum brake is a giant block of ice. So what I do is I take these all apart. I just totally get rid of the shoes. Yes, you don't have brakes, but we don't really ride that fast. We're just in the woods. And he's got the front disc brake conversion anyway. We are going to leave the tubes on and we're gonna slide the axle out this way. You need to get this off because there's a little flange on the inside where these bearings sit. So this whole piece has to slide off first and then we should be able to slide the axle out and then we'll be able to see how bad those splines are. Okay, now we got all four bolts off. So it just slides off like that. Put your nuts back on here. Just gonna make your life a lot easier. All right, so there's nothing holding this guy on this side. The drum is gone. You can see this is the large part that I was talking about. The axle kind of flares up here. This is where the bearings ride, and there's just, you know, like a natural groove here that stops it from sliding all the way through. So we gotta move this axle out. What you're gonna wanna do? Start twisting it and just give it a little bit of tension to pull back. And this whole thing slide right out. And as you can see, those are not in the best of shape. This is the problem. So new ring here, new axle. Splines here are done. I'm gonna clean this off so you guys can see how much worse it actually is. Now that we have it cleaned up a little bit more, you can see how worn out these midsections are. The edges right here are how the teeth are supposed to be, but after you know 13,000 kilometers of plowing and towing trailers and driving through mud, these are worn down to the point where they just will not connect anymore. So that's about as far as I'm going to go for right now. We're going to need a new ring gear in this. The pinion should be fine, but the fix for this is exactly what I did for my 4Man 400. It's a brand new axle from Armor Tech. It is a brand new ring gear from Armor Tech, I believe as well as a bearing and seal kit. These things will never seal well. You can see just how much mud is on the inside of them. And this axle is all corroded from basically the moisture getting at it for years and years. And it probably speeds this up, but I would have to imagine any foreman from say the late nineties, that's been getting regular use. It's gonna have the same issue. What do you think, Opes? So we're gonna order up a new axle, a new ring gear and a new bearing kit because we're already in here. So we can redo all the seals on everything. They don't really make enough power to break anything else. Splines here are good, splines here are good, but there's nothing you can do to fix that. So this is an ArborTech axle, eBay and no name eBay axle replacement. This would be the left side of the four wheel. This would be the right side with a drum bake. It slides on and works perfectly. So now I start taking this thing apart. Now we gotta drain this. Teeth on the new one, very square, versus teeth on the old one, eh, more like triangles. So 612s, 215s. There's two little pry points on this thing. One on the very bottom, where my PB blaster is, and one on the very top. You need a big flathead screwdriver and just start working it top and bottom. So once you crack it top and bottom, just take your screwdriver and very gently kind of work your way around this thing. 
because there is a ridge on the inside. So you're just gonna wanna work your way all the way around until it finally opens up. So this is a situation I had not encountered on the previous rear end rebuild that I did. Normally you're supposed to be able to take these bolts off and then this whole thing just lifts right out. Because this ring gear is so rusty, there was a ridge on the outside of the ring gear shaft, not letting it slide out of the bearing. So what I'm essentially having to do is raise it up a little bit, and then I take a flathead screwdriver and just pound this back and forth gently, working each side. And it was flush before, and now it's starting to recess back in. We just kind of make sure it's jacked up. So that's a great example of the ridge. This is where it was riding on the bearing. And then right here is where it got exposed to all the water from the seals that it let in. And it just swole it up enough that it wouldn't let go. You even put royal purple in this thing? Yeah. Ooh, fancy. So just like with the other side that we just pounded out, the side with the teeth had the same issue. Fortunately, it came out much easier and you're gonna wanna take that shim. So shims on both sides of these puppies. And now, the reassembly. All right, so if you made it this far, you're probably in the same boat. You're gonna need a new ring gear, you're gonna need a new axle, and you might as well do bearings and seals while you're at it. I put a link in the description to all of the parts that I use to rebuild my 4-man 400, as well as this 4-man 450ES. That's a new ring gear, that's a new axle, that's a boss bearing, bearing, and seals kit. I have a link also to the video that shows you how to rebuild a 4-man 400 rear end, a 450, a 500. I believe the parts are all interchangeable, but do your homework. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, see you next time.